The federal government said it successfully evacuated all Nigerians that were stranded in the crisis region Sudan's capital, Khartoum. The permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Sani Guazo, said this when he received the second batch of 130 evacuees at the Innamdi Azikawe International Airport in Abuja. The evacuees arrived at the pilgrims terminal of the airport at exactly 3.30 p.m. local time on board the TACO aircraft B373-300 from Port Sudan. Speaking further, Catherine Udofia, Director of Migration Affairs National Commission for Refugees, Migrant and Internally Displaced Persons, said the commission would also be providing psychosocial support to the returnees. We're now being joined by an international expert, Paula Jima. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Paul, if you can hear me, it's good to have you join us on the news now. Yes, thank you, Mercy, and good evening um, uh, your, to your viewers. All right, then. Nigeria and Egypt are the first and third biggest countries in Africa, if you want to look at it. And uh, we seem to have a trade volume of around $400 million. What could be the geographical complexity between these two countries, uh, especially preventing an amicable resolution of stranded Nigerians returning from Sudan? So... Well, I, I uh, you know, I think the external um, affairs minister in Nigeria should be able to answer this question. But one can only guess what is not going right, because um, it's not really at the uh, during this crisis that you begin to uh, uh, look at uh, relations between uh, two countries. It ought to be um, a continuum. Since if you have established uh, diplomatic relations. You need to work at it uh, since it's based on um, reciprocity. What um, that is the the rule that is the, uh, the rule of engagement. Um, so it, there there could be some um, um, strains in in the relationship. One, but if we were to go back to history or political history, you know that uh, by um, nature the um, uh, North African countries are not really too keen on them. They, they see themselves as more uh, Arab than, than African. So their relationship with the, um, you know, sub-Saharan Africa is always uh, one that um, if they have to gain something, that is when they really uh, try to. So it will uh, be based, like what I'm saying, that um, there have, there has, perhaps there are some uh, frictions that nobody is telling, and um, is, which has now come up during this um, uh, uh, conflict. Um, so um, they ought to work at it. The two countries they have the uh, uh, ambassadors in um, in the two countries. So I they ought to have uh, made sure that this type of thing does not um, uh, uh, occur and um, put um, so many lives uh, at risk. Mm. But, but, you know, let's move the conversation a bit further to the human angle. Uh, well, according to the UNHR, international borders are not zones of exclusion or exception for human rights ob uh, obligation. And yet we also understand that states have the right to govern migration within their jurisdiction. But, but what can you say is the line of departure in Egypt's handling of stranded Nigerians? I mean, in relation to these, those who are transiting Egypt, uh, you know, from Sudan. Well, um, you know, this is um, an emergency situation, and one would have, one would have expected that uh, some um, extraordinary measures would have uh, been uh, taken to make sure this is not the time to uh, begin to profile people to say you must have uh, uh, your passport or have your ID. Once the embassy, because this is where it depends on how this. Um, uh, the, 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 you know, the foreign missions of these two countries. They ought to have come together, um, talk to the Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs in that place. Make sure, I think, they, you know, you can't blame them for protecting their own interests, making sure that nobody, in the case of people trying to um, flee um, Sudan, that they don't end up in, um, in Egypt. I think that is what they are trying to avoid. But in doing so, you do not also put um, these lives um, at risk. 
So a middle ground ought to have been reached to make sure that um, they have the guarantee from the Nigerian side that, listen, we are taking charge of whoever and guarantee and, um, you know, indemnify the fact that anybody who we have taken, we have profiled, we have uh, collected at a point, um, will not have the possibility of um, slipping into um, uh, Egypt, but will go from Sudan up to the point where the point of evacuation from there to, um, to, to Nigeria. That is not the time to begin to talk about money, what you are going to get from these people or their visa. By the way, these are all African countries. These two countries belong to the AU. They belong to the UN, like you mentioned. Why is it now, why is it so difficult? But again, remember that um, uh, they don't want to take chances. There are uh, criminals uh, you need to, for security, I think national security. But you do not now uh, overemphasize that to the extent of um, uh, putting in peril uh, the lives of um, uh, citizens of other countries, because that also will breach international um, uh, convention. So that is the, that is the situation. And I think um, Nigerian um, uh, uh, diplomats have um, a long way to go. I mean, it's not only Nigeria. Um, so, uh, if but if Nigeria is um, affected in any peculiar way, then you begin to question the approach, the strategy uh, that has been employed. Why didn't they use the same strategy that other countries have used who have successfully evacuated their own citizens? So. That is it. But um, like I said, uh, it's, just, it's, too, uh, it's complex and complicated. But it's just, um, it's just too uh, sad that um, this is uh, rearing its head in this, um, uh, you know, at this time of, uh, of a crisis. People are traumatized. The least they can do if they are running away from a war situation in a country, in Sudan, I think uh, they all want to go to safety. Um, but again, the point is, um, whether some Nigerians are also not uh, trying to find their way to, to stay, maybe they don't want to come back. You have to also have to make allowance for that. And so Egyptian uh, authorities, security will be uh, very strict to make sure that that does not happen. They don't want to welcome any um, illegal um, immigrant. Mm. If you are coming there, you have to come, you know, uh, the legal way and so on and so forth. But um, this is something they have, uh, they ought to have uh, uh, discussed through consultation, through, um, you know, engagement that will uh, ensure that um, uh, nobody is hurt. But unfortunately, that, has, uh, that hasn't happened. I hope um, it's a learning curve. Um, Nigeria will learn, the, the Egyptians will also learn, and um, uh, Nigeria, ordinary Nigerians will learn, and Nigerian diplomats will also learn um, to how to engage. But also, anyway, let me not go into the fact that uh, there are too many hooks, you know, that they say spoiled is uh, uh, brought. Um, the fact that uh, not only Nigeria's foreign, min uh, min foreign affairs ministry is involved makes it complicated. If um, you have uh, NEMA, you have uh, the um, Diaspora Commission, you have um, for, uh, Ministry of um, uh, Humanitarian Affairs. This case, while they are there, for Christ's sake, involves just the foreign ministry. It is when they get back to, the, to Nigeria that you now begin to talk about it because if they, they, you have to make the Egyptians deal with so many, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, agencies at the same time, they may feel confused and then say, okay, you sort yourself out before we can deal with you or determine who we have, we have to engage. This, this, this type of um, untidy situation can uh, delay things or pre, pre, uh, co, uh, you know, constitute a clog in the wheel of um, negotiation or progress. Let's but uh, like I, I'm saying, I'm only just uh, uh, second-guessing or uh, 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 making some uh, presumptions. So we're, we're, we're actually going to get to that particular part of it, even though you have stated, uh, you know, some of it. But I'd like that you, you know, speak on this issue, the actions that are open to the Nigerian government in exploring an amicable resolution to this. You have talked about having uh, a unified form in, in the case of this conflict. And what other issues do you think, uh, you know, the Nigerian government can explore? Plus, 
do you also think that we have actually handled this in a very uh, awesome manner? Well, um, that is what we call the early warning system. Uh, the ministry, the uh, foreign ministry, or the, 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 the function of uh, an embassy in a foreign land is to be able to monitor the security, you know, uh, analysis, risk uh, analysis, to know when it is um, safe to, um, and advise your home government that, listen, this is the time, this is what we can do. If that uh, advice is not coming, or if that uh, advice, when it comes, is not acted upon, this can lead to delay. This can, you know, it's a chain, you know, by the time, uh, you know, like a relay race. If anybody drops the ball or drops the bat bat button, it's going to affect uh, the whole thing. But the, the, the Nigeria's reputation is at stake. Uh, we, we shouldn't have allowed that to happen. You begin early. You don't wait until, you know, you start, the shootout starts before. You see countries give um, travel advice, you know, advisory to their citizens. They say, don't go, don't travel to this place or don't remain home and uh, or gather at a safe place where it will be easy for evacuation. But that hasn't happened. Remember also that Nigeria, some of Niger some Nigerians, not every, they make it uh, difficult because they do not register with the embassy. They go there on their own. Remember how do they go? Some go by, by sea, others go through the desert. So some forms of, uh, they call it uh, irregular migration. And when they do that, they do not take um, the embassy into uh, uh, consideration. It's only when now they run into trouble. Otherwise, the, the, the thing to do is that when you are, as a foreigner, in a foreign land, you have to register with your embassy. But the point is, some of them will say, well, the embassy uh, hasn't been of any, has not covered itself in glory. They are not of any help, so you don't bother. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, oh. when there is crisis, you now start uh, blaming uh, the Paul, embassy. we have to go. Your country. Yes. So I, I think it's a complex. It requires the action from all sides, both um, the citizens and then the government. All right. Thank you so much, Paul Jimé, for joining us this evening on the News Now. We do appreciate your time. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.